Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The topic of my presentation today will be dental considerations in chemotherapy treated patients. There are three modalities used in treatment of head and neck tumor, namely surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Surgery and radiation are used more in the treatment of head and neck tumors than chemotherapy. Surgical resection often creates large defects accompanied by dysfunction and disfigurement. Speech, swallowing, control of saliva, mastication and aesthetics can be adversely affected. Radiotherapy and chemotherapy produce significant morbidity and unique tissue management problems. Radiotherapy and chemotherapy can cause long-term irreversible secular in the oral cavity. Radiation has the advantage of localizing morbidity to specific area. Both modalities, surgery and radiation, have adverse effect on normal tissue such as cellular changes and reduced vascularity but morbidity is usually limited to the tumor area however chemotherapy produce more systemic effects the morbidity is not localized antineoplastic agents or tumor chemotherapeutic agents are effective because they disrupt cellular growth and proliferation and as we all know that tumor cells are more rapidly dividing than normal cells so they are more affected by the chemotherapeutic agent and in normal tissue the more rapidly dividing cells will have will will be get side effects more from the chemotherapy than the slow dividing cells you will find the manifestations more uh, of the chemotherapy like in the skin tissues which is more rapidly dividing than other tissue or the alimentary canal tissue will be more affected because it's rapidly dividing about 65 to 75 percent of all cancer patients will receive chemotherapy during some part of the course of their disease Treatment by chemotherapy are unable to match the success of surgery and radiation is the treatment of head and neck tumors. As we mentioned earlier, in the treatment of head and neck tumors, surgery and radiation is used more than chemotherapy. Sometimes use chemotherapy as a palliative treatment, but it, in other diseases like in blood diseases, leukemia, the chemotherapy is the only effective mean it's much has a much higher success rate than either surgery or, or radiation direct cytotoxic effects occasionally lead to mucositis leukopenia leukopenia which is the lowering of white blood cells count and this will cause lowering of the patient immunity and make the patient more liable to infection either by viral bacteria or fungal infection so it's a serious complication leukopenia is a serious complication for chemotherapy another serious complication is the decreasing of platelets count because of the lowering of the platelets count there is tendency for bleeding so before doing extraction for any patient with receiving chemotherapy we have to make CBC to find the level of the platelets because if the platelets count is very low like sometimes it reach 25,000 or below if you do extraction 
the patient will bleed till death you will not be able to control bleeding so before extraction you have to do CBC and it's better to be safe than sorry The oral manifestations of chemotherapy include mucositis, xerostomia, bleeding, and infection. In oral mucositis, you will find, as, as in this figure, severe redness, erythematous tissue, thinning and atrophy of the oral epithelium, followed by ulceration and sloughing. Xerostomia or dry mouth is thought to be caused by the effect of chemotherapy on major and minor salivary glands. Like in this figure, very dry mouth, fissured tongue. This patient will use salivary substitutes. And whenever there is Xerostomia, you will find caries. So, patient with xerostomia will be more liable to caries, and they should use. Oral hemorrhage, as we mentioned earlier, there is a spontaneous bleeding from the gingival crevice because the circular epithelium, which is more rapidly dividing, is more affected by chemotherapy. As we mentioned, the more rapidly dividing cells are more affected by the chemotherapeutic agents and the patient has tendency for spontaneous bleeding. Infection. Low patient immunity to infection including fungal infection, viral infection and bacterial infection. Angular colitis is an example of fungal infection. Candidiasis, as you see in this figure, is another example of fungal infection. In immunocompromised patients, the infection can be very severe. The candida infection can be very severe. Viral infection like herpes simplex virus also occur as in this figure. Periodontal disease, which is a form of bacterial infection, also is possible to occur as there is gingival inflammation and recession. And with intensive doses of chemotherapy, there may be advanced periodontal disease with complete root dehiscence. doing water rafting on the Ohio River. Oral care before chemotherapy includes clinical examination and examination for the any prosthetic appliance. Dental treatment such as dental prophylaxis, dental restoration, root canal therapy, surgery or extraction may be indicated. Any prosthetic appliance should be examined for proper fit, function, and smoothness. If there is any sharp margin, it should be smoothened, and if it's not adequately retained, it should be soft relined. Because inadequacies, inadequacies and defects in the processes may become a potential source for problems during chemotherapy. During chemotherapy, proper oral hygiene measures should be stressed. Saline bicarbonate mouth rinses. Avoid hydrogen peroxide and commercial mouth washes because it contains alcohols and has irritating effect on the mucosa. Nystatin mouth washes to prevent colonization of candida. 
denture hygiene measures and use of soft liners to improve comfort and retention. Maintenance of adequate nutrition during therapy is essential. After chemotherapy, the oral care is as follows. The best time to deliver dental care is during remission of the malignancy and during periods of rest from chemotherapy. Dental prophylaxis, restorative, periodontal, and surgical procedure should be done at that time. If xerostomia occur, mouthwashes and the artificial saliva and fluoride application should be done. Always stress on oral hygiene measures and make periodic follow-up. This is with Professor John Bumer, is considered the father of modern maxillofacial prosthodontics. Another topic we will speak about radiotherapy processes. The importance of radiotherapy processes includes it reduces the side effects of the treatment, protect tissues that are not meant to receive radiation, safer for the radiotherapist, increases the accuracy of radiation source, and this results in a more cooperative patient. There are general requirements for any radiotherapy processes, which include comfort, it should be comfortable, has minimal weight, stable and accurate, self-retaining, need minimal adjustment, fracture resistance, easy to repair and clean, allow patient to breathe easily, allow visualization of underlying tissue. This means it should be done from self-cure, clear acrylic resin better, easy to place and remove by the patient. Whenever planning a radiotherapy process, there should be agreement and understanding between the prosthodontist and the radiotherapist. The first example for radiotherapy processes is a fluoride tray or fluoride carrier or fluoride stent. As we mentioned earlier, patient receiving radiation therapy and chemotherapy will be more liable to xerostomia and this will make the patient more liable for caries and, and whenever there is xerostomia the patient should apply fluoride on a daily basis he, we place the fluoride which is neutral pH 1% sodium fluoride gel on these silicone carriers for 5 to 10 minutes every day also this carrier will decrease the backscatter radiation from metallic restoration as amalgam or metal crowns. Position extends processes to displace the tissue. This type of stent may be used to displace the, di the diseased tissue within the radiation field and normal tissue away from the radiation field. Here are examples of position extent that are used to displace the tongue. Here a positioning device done by wax intraorally. You get like two occlusion rims of wax and the patient bite on them at, at the maximum biting position. We are opening the bite as much as we can and we place a, hor a horizontal shelf of wax in between them this wax, is this horizontal shelf of wax, is meant to lower the tongue because it's the tongue is the tissue meant to be receiving radiation. So we displace the tongue lower and we open the bite maximally to save part of the parotid gland from the effect of radiation. Another example of intrapositioning appliance used for stereotactic radiotherapy. I published this article in the University of Illinois in the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry. For patients having intracranial tumors such as pituitary adenomes, meningiomes, they receive radiation, high doses of radiation from different angles and for several weeks. 
so we have to confirm that the patient head position is always the same during receiving the treatment because any mistake here will cause permanent brain damage in the old days they used to fix the patient head to the machine by external pin fixation which is very aggressive a simple technique is it will take five minutes to do take impression for the upper arch make a triad palatal plate light curing material and embed in it six beads of metal in different positions like here in this figure and before starting treatment they will set the patient make the arrangement and put the, this metal beads and when they get the exact position they will make like an, a film to locate the positions of these six beads and in every treatment session they make sure that the head position of the patient is the same when these metal beads will coincide with the one in the previous film per oral cone positioning device we call it beam locator or beam director this is used for treatment of superficial lesions by also voltage radiation also voltage as we will take in the next lecture is radiation about 250 kilo electron volt so as we mentioned radiation is taken over several weeks this is to direct the beam every time in the same position radiation carrier in which we place radioactive isotope in confined area and this radioactive topes is the radioactive isotope in the form of capsule beads or needle radioactive source such as cesium-132 or iridium-192 is used like here in figure A there is recurrent squamous cell carcinoma of the soft palate the patient before received full dose of external beam radiation and after some time the lesion recurred so we cannot give another high dose of external beam radiation because of the tolerance of the adjacent tissue this will cause necrosis of the whole palate if we de do something like that we have to give small area of radiation confined to this area this by means of radioactive isotopes uh, we call it brachyradiotherapy we took impression for the palate for the maxilla and as in figure b we outline the area of the recurrence and we make a clear palatal stent and these markings as in figure b this is done by the radiotherapist who is the one to decide where we will put the radioactive isotope and the amount of radiation that the patient will receive your role is to do this palatal stent only as you see in figure 3 there is polyethylene tubes this is uh, narrow tubes hollow and inside the tube the radiotherapist will embed beads or seeds or needle of the radioactive material in the position which he will decide and for the time he will decide on it the polyethylene tube is embedded in the fitting surface but the radioactive isotope will cause also radiation for the surrounding tissue including the tongue so in the polishing surface of this palatal stent we will place a shielding material like syrup bend alloy when doing the waxing up you will do hollow area and after processing you will fill it with molten syrup bend alloy which has a, a low melting temperature like 70 degree and it prevents backscatter radiation and it it acts exactly like lead in preventing the effect of radiation figure f the stent inside the patient mouse with the polyethylene tubing shielding is another example of radiotherapy processes it's an intraoral processes designed to shield adjacent tissue from radiation during also voltage treatment of malignant lesions 
of head and neck region. Cerebend alloy has been shown to be as effective as lead in preventing the passage of an electron beam. They say that one centimeter of cerebend will prevent like 95% of a radiation beam of the power of 18 mega electron volts. Example of the shielding appliance is the parotid stent. Here in figure A, the patient presents with squamous cell carcinoma of buccal mucosa of the cheek. The patient will receive radiation for this tumor. It is on his left hand side. On the left hand side, there is or in the left on the left side of the patient there is this squamous cell carcinoma so the radiation will be directed from the left side we want to spare the, for sure the parotid gland on the left side will be in the field of radiation we want to spare the tongue and the parotid gland on the other side so we take impressions for the upper and lower make mounting on the maximum opening position and you as you see in figure B we will make this parotid shield. It's made first in wax, and the wax on the left side will be hollow. So after processing in acrylic resin, we'll pour inside it the molten CeraBand alloy, which, uh, as I said earlier, it's made like about 70 degree, and this will act as a shield, protecting the mandible and the buccal mucosa, protecting the mandible and the maxilla on the left side which is the side we receive radiation and also protecting the tongue mandible and maxilla and parotid gland on the right side of course we cannot spare in this uh, case the parotid on the left side because the direction of radiation will come from this area and in figure c the parotid stent the parotid shield is inside the patient mouse thank you